In this video, I'm gonna share the one single most impactful thing that I did that allowed my online store over at Bumblebee Linens to hit seven figures, my blog over at mywifequitterjob.com to grow over a million dollars per year, and my YouTube channel to make over $300,000 per year. It is, in my opinion, the most important thing that you can do to propel your business forward. In fact, what I'm gonna tell you today doesn't just apply to business. It pretty much applies to everything in life, whether you wanna make more money or to achieve financial freedom. So to begin, I'm gonna tell you three separate stories about my own experiences and then tie it all together for you at the end so that you can do the same. Discovering this for myself was an accident, but it doesn't have to be an accident for you. Now, the first story I'm gonna tell you happened around a decade ago. My e-commerce store was doing multiple six figures in revenue, but I was kinda of at a plateau. The prior couple of years, I was growing in the double and triple digits, but things started to stagnate and we weren't growing as fast. Meanwhile, my wife and I, we were arguing a lot more because we were both trying to juggle running a business and taking care of two kids. Basically, we were at an in-between phase of the business where we were reluctant to hire more people because we didn't feel like we made enough to justify it, but we probably needed to hire someone. Anyway, my buddy Andrew Udarian invited me to Montana for a mastermind group meeting along with nine other entrepreneurs. Now, in case you don't know what a mastermind is, it's basically a group of people, entrepreneurs in this case, that get together and help each other with their businesses. And typically, you go around the room and everyone takes turns asking questions that they have on how they can improve their business. And whoever's turn it is to ask questions is in what is called the hot seat. Anyway, when it was my turn to get on the hot seat, I proudly showed everyone my website, told them how much I was making, and asked for feedback. Now, at the time, I thought I was doing pretty well. So I actually wasn't expecting much negative feedback. Maybe a couple tidbits here and there, but I was expecting mass praise. So I was appalled when everyone in the room took turns ripping my website to total shreds. By the way, the rules of the mastermind are that you give the honest truth and that you don't hold back. And trust me, no one held back. Here were some of the comments that I got. This website looks like it was designed in the 90s. You need to redesign your website right now. You run an online course that teaches this stuff? I wouldn't take your class if I saw your website. And another fellow masterminder told me, hey Steve, these are the types of sites that I like to buy fix up, and then resell at a massive profit. Now hearing these comments really hurt my pride, and I tried my best not to be defensive. But man, was it painful to hear every single person in the room totally destroy my business. Anyway, as soon as I got back from the mastermind, I immediately contacted my designer, whipped up a quick mock-up in Photoshop based on the feedback in the group, and started cranking on the redesign. My process for the implementation was pretty straightforward. I just went through and plowed through each and every single page myself, laid it out roughly how I wanted it to look, and had a designer pick up the pieces to make it look better. I budgeted about six weeks to get the redesign done with me contributing about 40 hours of my own time, and every single page on my site was completely redone. Overall, the project ended up taking seven weeks and cost me about 1,800 bucks, but immediately I saw the results. My desktop conversion rates increased by 46%, my mobile conversion rates increased by 21%, and my tablet conversion rates increased by 25%. By the way, the conversion rate is the percentage chance that a customer makes a purchase when they land on your site. So basically with these changes, my sales went up nearly 30%. My online store had the best year of growth that I had experienced in a while, and it was all thanks to getting beat down in a mastermind meeting. By the way, here are some before and after shots of my website just for fun. All right, hold on to that story because I'll tie everything together at the end, I promise. All right, this next story was with my friend Lars, who incidentally was a member of that same Montana mastermind. Now, it was probably a few years later, and Lars and I kept in touch via email and text since that meeting. Now, I can't remember the exact year, but I'm guessing it was around 2015. Anyway, one day out of the blue, he messages me and tells me, yo, Steve, you have to get on Amazon. And my first reaction was, Hey, I'm doing just fine on my own website. Why would I want to complicate my life with another platform or marketplace? And Lars was like, hey, right now it's super easy. Think of Amazon like an ATM machine. You feed it products and money comes out. Months passed and I did nothing. And to be honest, I had major problems motivating myself to sell on Amazon. Our online store was already doing very well on its own, growing in the double digits, and I didn't really see a strong need to sell on a platform where I had little control. Now, Lars noticed that I hadn't done anything so he went on the offensive. Every single week, he started sending me emails, politely reminding me to list my items on Amazon. Then he started telling me how much money he was making off of selling a small set of products, and when that didn't do the trick, 
He started telling me about all these cool strategies that he was using to make his Amazon listings more visible, strategies that very few people were using. But here's the thing, Lars had nothing to gain from urging me to get on Amazon. He was just looking out for me. Anyway, after weeks of hounding, I finally broke down and decided to list a couple of items on Amazon on a whim, and the results were immediate. Within eight days, we sold out of our initial inventory of about 60 units as a completely brand new seller and sales continued to rise. In our very first month of selling on Amazon, we made almost 3,000 selling just three products, and just one month later, we were doing over 5K a month. And today, Amazon represents about 15 to 20% of our seven-figure business revenue. Now, while these numbers are only a very small fraction of what we make with our real online store, they're definitely on our radar, and what's surprising is that our online store sales are up for the same products that we have on Amazon. It just goes to show that sometimes you need a bit of external pressure to get yourself off your butt, which is why it's extremely important to associate yourself with like-minded people on your entrepreneurship journey. All right, one more story, and I promise to tie everything together at the end. This last story involves my friend Grant Baldwin. Grant runs a speakerlab.com where he teaches other people how to do public speaking, and what he does for a living isn't important. What is important is how he helped double my revenue. Now, I want to say the year was 2015. My memory is a little fuzzy, but that year I made around $400,000 per year selling my online course. And for all of you who don't know this, I run a class that teaches people how to sell online over at ProfitableOnlineStore.com. Anyway, I was chatting with Grant one day, and our conversation started gravitating towards business, so we shared with each other how much we were making in our business strategies. And at the time, I was super proud of how I was selling my online course on autopilot. Sales would come in every day on autopilot through my email mini course, and I kind of boasted that my free six-day mini course was better than some people's paid classes. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about e-commerce, make sure you sign up for this six-day mini course below. So Grant listened to my story and congratulated me for my sales numbers that year, and then he dropped an atomic bomb. He was making 5x what I was making, selling a more obscure course that cost nearly 50% less than mine did. So how did he do it? He was giving live webinars or presentations every single week and making like 30 to 50K a pop every time he presented online. And I was flabbergasted. Not only did Grant tell me his numbers, but he emailed me his spreadsheets outlining exactly how much revenue each webinar generated and how he tweaked his presentation each time to improve his conversion rate. And when he told me this and gave me his entire playbook, I was intrigued but terrified. At the time, I was deathly afraid of giving live presentations online, and I was afraid that I'd go live with nothing to say. But once again, like Lars, Grant emailed me to check up on me. He'd just drop a quick note that said, hey, Steve, did you go live yet? Hey, Steve, try this and I guarantee you it'll work. Steve, I just made 35K in 60 minutes. Do you want to make 35K in 60 minutes? And it finally worked. Now, as an engineer, I wanted to be prepared, so I watched all Grant's webinars and other presentations from top influencers online. Basically, I studied in excruciating detail over 15 webinars in the span of the week, and then picked and chose which elements to incorporate into my own performance. And I also consulted with my friend Tony, who was also instrumental in helping me get my performance down pat. Now, everyone has a different style and strategy. Some people talk about themselves for 45 minutes, building up their authority and credibility, and then providing 15 minutes of useful content. Other people talk about their success stories for the bulk of their talk and tease their audience into wanting to learn how they did it. And then finally, some people just give one long motivational speech and get the crowd super excited about their program. Now, these strategies all work, but unfortunately, I wasn't good at any of that stuff. I hate talking about myself, I'm not good at teasing people, and I'm not exactly a motivational speaker. So for my webinar, I decided to just give away as much information as possible in a 60-minute span. I didn't hold back at all and taught some of my best strategies. And it worked. In the course of just 90 minutes, I made $60,000 in my first webinar. And once I added webinars into my mix, I hit the million dollar mark with my business just one year later. All right, so you're probably thinking to yourself, where can you meet your Andrew Udarian, your Lars Hunley, or your Grant Baldwin? I met each and every one of these people at a live conference. And here's the thing. Chances are your local friends are not doing the same thing as you want to do. When I started my online store, none of my friends were in e-commerce. All my close friends here in California are doctors, lawyers, or engineers, and they cannot relate to my businesses at all. But when you attend a conference, everyone is doing the same thing as you, and it's magical. All of a sudden, you don't feel crazy anymore. All of a sudden, you can talk freely about marketing and sales without worrying about boring anyone. And this is exactly the reason why I started my own event, the Seller Summit, back in 2016, and I've been running it ever since. Seller Summit is a conference that I hold every year that specifically targets e-commerce entrepreneurs selling physical products online. And you've probably been watching my channel long enough to know that I do not tolerate fluff. 
Unlike other events that focus on inspirational stories and high-level BS, mine is a curriculum-based conference where you leave with practical and actionable strategies specifically for an e-commerce business. I also keep my events small and intimate because I hate large events. If you're anything like me, you probably feel massive anxiety walking to a large group of people you don't know, but it's not like that in my event. Every year we cut off ticket sales to 200 people and we always sell out way in advance. Now remember that first mastermind where I grew my online store by 30%? Well, we also run masterminds at Seller Summit as well. We split up into groups of about 10, lock ourselves in a room, cater in food, and let the magic happen. Anyway, I don't want to turn this video into a sales pitch for Seller Summit, but I do want to say that meeting other like-minded entrepreneurs face-to-face -face is guaranteed to change your life. I have friends like Natalie Mounter, who met her mastermind group at Seller Summit 2017, and she's been meeting with him ever since. I met Lars, Andrew, Grant, and my business partner Tony at an event, and I would not be where I am today without them. Now, this is cliche that you're the sum of your five closest friends, and cliches exist for a reason, because they're 100% true. In any case, my next event is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida on May 23rd to the 25th over at sellersummit.com. Let's hang out in person, and I can 100% guarantee you that you'll learn a lot and you'll make a bunch of new friends who may become your future Andrew Udarians, your future Lars Hunleys, or your future Grant Baldwins.